All right, so here's some help on checkpoint number, what the heck checkpoint is this? Uh, checkpoint number five, which is slides 10 of your presentation. So um, I had you do a project hypothesis discussion board. Everyone should have posted their own uh, possible hypotheses there. Uh, and a lot, I know a lot of groups didn't. So if you didn't do that, you might want to go back and make sure you don't lose those discussion board points. Um, but now... Um, in the discussion board, you needed to post up two different variables, uh, whereas here in this um, checkpoint, you only need to look at one variable. So you need to decide ahead of time what variable each person is going to look at because you need to do separate variables. So um, let's just say, and this is so I'm going to fill this out like it's me, I'm going to look at um, birthplace because I'm going to use our, our survey data. So birthplace was a three-level categorical uh, variable. So this is what birthplace looked like. It had San Diego, USA, outside of the USA, uh, California, but not San Diego. So actually it was a four-level variable, right? We had San Diego, California, U.S., and outside the U.S. Now, here's the deal. When we're looking at a single categorical variable, we have two ways we can handle this situation. One is that we can do our normal test for proportion. However, if I'm making a test for proportions, here's where I need to be able to say, okay, my hypothesis null is that P is equal to something. Well, I need to define what the heck P is because right now I have four different things and I don't know what my yes is in my binomial experiment. So let's just say that I think class is from Sam. I think San Diego is going to be the biggest group of everybody in that variable without having looked at it. That's just my belief is that the majority of students here at Mesa are probably San Diego natives. And since I just said the majority, that means my hypothesis, my alternative hypothesis is probably that P is greater than 0 0.5. I can't type the majority of our class is from San Diego. All right, and so this is a, a fairly terrible, <coughs> sorry, for lack of a better term, um, hypothesis because I'm talking about our class and almost everyone filled out this survey. So maybe I don't want to say my population is our class. Maybe I want to say of Mesa students from San Diego. And I'm just going to use our class as my sample, right? Of course, um, this is going to be a very biased sample because it's a convenience sample. Um, but at the same time, at least then I can say I'm actually doing some inference because the previous statement, I can just look at the percentages and tell you the answer to that. This, I don't know the answer to, and I'm going to use my sample to see if we can make this conclusion. So in terms of stat crunch results, I'm doing a proportion test because birthplace, again, is categorical. So I'm going to stat crunch. Oops. I'm going to go to uh, stat proportion, one sample with data. And we're going to choose birthplace. Here's the thing that is the trick to this is you need to put in what our success is, what the variable is that we care about. This is making it into a yes, no, instead of a four level categorical variable. So I have to type in San Diego, California, exactly like it appears here. If it's wrong, this won't work. So just make sure that your, your uh, capitalization, everything is consistent here. And then I can choose the hypothesis test I want to do. I thought more than half of the students here at Mesa are probably from San Diego. And I can go ahead and compute. And then I get this lovely set of hypotheses. So let me, eh, I'll copy it and see if it works well on just Google Slides. Copy it, come back here. Boom, all right, it's not terrible. I can work with that. Nope, come back here. This is going to be a pain. Why do I have all this extra shit? All right, I don't like this. <laughs> I'm angry. Uh, but this isn't terrible. So we get all this stuff. We have our little, this little piece too. I could have also just done a screen cap, which would have given me a little bit more control. Uh, and in retrospect, I kind of wish I had done it. It's too late now. Maybe it's not. Screw it. I'm going to do a screen cap instead. Let me delete all this. Uh, snipping tool, my friend. 
So since I have a PCM new snipping tool, I will come back over here, unhighlight this thing, pull up my snipping tool, grab this section, because it's going to be a lot smaller than it came up when I copied it, copy it, and control V. Now I have something I can really move around. Okay. So there are my stat crunch results. Here's what I was testing. And since this is actually showing me this, I could even get rid of this part and just have the null is at 50% of Mesa students. Um, but this is consistent with my hypotheses. And I've got a p-value of 0 0.05, uh, 0 0.4583, which is a humongous p-value. So our uh, statistical decision would be to fail to reject the null. And so our conclusion, and this is the part that matters the most, is there is not enough evidence to conclude and then you can do I'm going to do this statement that the majority of Mesa students are from San Diego. Now we did have more than 50% in our sample. I got lucky here. It was 50.5% um, but not far enough away from 50 that we can say definitively that's true for all Mesa students. And then what the heck did I ask you to say for thoughts? Oops, this is where I need the bottom. I have those comments. Do you think that's a reasonable conclusion? Were you correct in your hypotheses? Any reasons the sample and I have been represented the, search, the, the population? So um, this conclusion seems reasonable given that our value of 50 but you guys can't, yes you can, 50.5% is so close to 50%. However, since our sample was a convenient sample, um, it is hard to uh, extend those results to the entire mix of population. All right, so something like that, and obviously we could change the size of this font because it's having some trouble fitting on the screen. But um, this is probably a slide that's not going to make it into your final presentation, so don't worry too much about how pretty it is. Um, I mostly care that you showed me that you can take something like our beautiful categorical variable and check the hypotheses on it because it's been a hot minute since we did part six and part seven. So if you have a quantitative variable, same business, Kelly, and you're going to say what your variable is. So in this case, let's look at uh, birth year. There's one right next to it in that same thing. Birth year is a quantitative variable. And again, before you look at your data, you want to make some conclusions. Now here's where this kind of sucks. We don't have a beautiful mu inside of our, uh, we don't have a nice math type. There are math type add-ons which I have, which I'm not going to use because it, it seems like it'll be confusing for you guys. I'm just going to go to special characters and find, uh, oh goodness gracious, some math maybe? We'll see. We'll see. It's technically Greek letter, so I don't know if it'll be in the math section. And a smart person would have looked it up ahead of time, but too late for me. A lot of derivative symbol. That's great. Not what I want. Do we really see Greek? I do not. Mm. Latin. Guys, I'm pausing you while I look. All right, I found it in alf math alphanumeric. Didn't take me that long. I think if I'd also searched mu, I would have just gotten there a hell of a lot faster. And then look how many different mu's I could choose from. Choose your favorite mu. Um, I think that just puts it on the page. Yup. We're down there. All right, so since we're doing something quantitative, we want to talk about mu. Um, I would say guess at what you think the average birth year is. So I might guess 1999 because I think people coming straight out of high school would be potentially 2000. Um, I do imagine might get pulled a little bit lower, maybe 1998, by the fact that we do have people older than that as well. But maybe that's my hypothesis. And then, so the average birth year of Mesa students will be 1998, slightly older than fresh 
child of high school. You don't need to put this extra piece. I'm just trying to explain my reasoning. Um, and then again, it doesn't matter what your formatting looks like here. HA would then be, well, maybe let's do Um, you might think it's older than this. Um, if I don't really have a direction, it is completely legit to go ahead and put in a, oh my god, I've already forgotten special character. Uh, let's just go to the math area. Let's do a not equal to that has to exist. I'm going to start using the search key because I'm bad at this. Sorry, not equal to, and then 1998. So that might be my alternative. Let's just say that I'm wrong. Cool. So stat crunch results again. Stat crunch. Oops. This time I'm looking at a t stat because we're doing something with means. Again, I have my data, birth year, and I can say I think the mean is going to be 1998, and I'll leave this as a not equal to, and compute. And here we have a very different conclusion. Again, I'm going to go ahead and just snipping tool this. Uh, if you do Control Shift. I think it's control shift four in an Apple or a Mac, you get a, a screen cap just like that. It will save it instead of letting you copy it, which is kind of a pain. And at least on my Mac, it always saves it to my desktop, which is super annoying. So then I can put that in there. In my conclusion, there is enough evidence. Let's look at that tiny ass p value. To conclude. The average birth year of, ugh, this is the problem right now, birth year, I said birthday when I was in here, oops, birth year of Mesa students is not 1998. All right, and then I don't like the spacing of this, so I don't know how to change spacing. There we go. Still, that's still stupid. Remove space after list item. Thank you. We'll fix that. There you go. Uh, thoughts, blah, 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 blah. Same ideas, right? Like, okay, well, definitely we see now that the sample mean is 1994. So that looks like a much more reasonable birth year that the average age of a Mesa student is around, what is that, 24 as opposed to uh, 20. So we were off by about four years. Um, and that's probably from all the returning students, right? We do have a skewed right variable, skewed left variable, which is pulling that mean way down from probably the median result. And if I want to be really classy about this, I can even look at the median result. So the last thing I mentioned in the um, little stuff on Blackboard was the idea that you could do what's called a chi-squared goodness of fit test. Um, in my traditional class, we'll see that today on Monday. Um, uh, birthplace. Okay, so let's just say we wanted to look at birthplace again. One other thing, since this is four categories, when we look at a proportion test, we're, we're simplifying it down to one. Um, so another test you could do is what's called the goodness of fit test, chi-squared. Um, and you could be looking at... What? Oh, because it wants counts. Oh, this is terrible. Okay, hold on a second. Oops, cancel. This is pain. I'm not even going to finish this in time because the thing's going to finish. Um, I want a table, frequency, for birthplace, uh, store in a data table. Oh, all right. So here we go. Now we've got it. So I made a frequency table for birthplace. It's over here. Um, and you can see the breakdown. If I thought the breakdown was something different, I could write in what I thought the real frequencies were here. But this is what I'm going to use in my chi-squared goodness of fit test. I'm going to say the observed things were here. There's my frequencies. And the expected, I could either put what I expected to happen, or more likely you're going to say that you thought it was equally likely that somebody be from California, San Diego, outside of California, or outside of California, or outside the U.S. And if you do that, it gives you a chi-squared test, basically saying, here's the p-value. And this chi-squared test is basically saying there is no way that all of these things are equally likely. Um, people are not coming to Mesa from San Diego, California, the U.S., all the same. Um, so that's that's the chi-squared goodness of fit. The easiest is to do a single, like they're all the same. Um, but you could use this to also do, I think the breakdown is going to be 50% from San Diego, 
25, 25.